away from because uh, well, you're here, there, and everywhere, and you do all these different things. <laughs> and then some people say, well, you should stick with one thing. But that's just me. That's just, I think, my personality. Trying new art forms, new ideas, creating different uh, things. So I will kind of hop you know, around, depending on the, how I feel at the time or what I want to do, what I want to create. are for artists who need like color wheels, match colors. I've never had problems with colors. I just automatically mix them and match them and whatever. If you just lock yourself into those rules and the box of rules and don't go outside of that box, you're not going to be able to create things that you probably could otherwise. So I've always gone fairly outside the box somewhat. As a young gentleman, unfortunately, my parents didn't get along real well. And one way to escape situations you don't like, everybody has a way out. So I guess instead of choosing drugs or whatever, I decided to hang out in the woods a lot. So pretty much nature was kind of a, a place that I found kind of quiet, peace and solace. And I learned a lot by watching the animals, the birds and the interaction I had. I had a lot of pets, uh, pet crows, different animals, starling I raised, caught snakes and stuff. It probably it benefited me that way. And because of that, I pretty much uh, probably continued my interest in birds and, and nature and creating natural things. I will probably always be at carving, sculpting birds. I did start it later in life, in the 27 or so, and, and I always felt that was one of maybe my stronger points, even though I dabble in other art mediums. A friend of mine took me to a show, and I was really impressed with the work they did there, and I was also impressed with the prices because I couldn't afford them. <laughs> so I said, hey, I'm going to try this. I bought blank, like it's called a blank a goldfinch, first piece, got the eyes, the legs, and it went home, started carving, and then I never looked back. I would spend sometimes till one, two o'clock in the morning doing it, working on a piece. I worked for about two years at the Philadelphia Zoo. I would draw at my lunch break. You know, I'd eat real fast. Then I'd go out and do some sketches. If I was a relief keeper, I would relieve each keeper that was off for those two days. So I got to rotate all different areas of the zoo. And I almost got stomped down with a, by an ostrich. And I got smacked by a bear. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting things that happen there. And probably was one of my favorite jobs. If I had a choice ever, I could stay the rest of my life and just you know, take care of the animals and interact with them. I end up in the exhibits department making rocks stuff. So you make these, when you go to the zoo now, you see all the work that they've done. Well, I kind of helped initiate that. They won't tell you that, but this is a fiberglass. This is probably one piece that I'll only do in a lifetime, the owl. Uh, I entered it years back in the World Championship competition, not expecting to really do anything with it. I went back to the hotel room to my wife. I said, forget it. They got an eagle in there. They got some really beautiful pieces. And when I came back, it had a uh, like an honorable mention ribbon on it, which meant that uh, I had placed among some of the top carvers in the world. And I thought that was just awesome. It was great. Now he's been in many other shows and he's won you know, a lot of other competitions and he's always been kind of a focal piece. Uh, so that's like a, I guess you call it your, your masterpiece sort of. And uh, I'm talking uh, time-wise, this one, I was close to six months of work and the price reflects that too. <laughs> Success can be viewed in different ways. Uh, 
If you're an artist and you're making a lot of money, it can be successful. You may be an artist, maybe struggling or whatever. But if your art makes a connection with an individual, if they see it and it touches a chord and there's something about it that they fall in love with it, um, they'll purchase it because there's a relationship formed between the work you've created and the connection you've made with that individual. It takes time to produce a piece and that's part of your life that you have incorporated into that piece. So when they purchase it, you're not only selling your artwork, you're selling part of your life.